Welcome, Earthlings. We're gonna to talk today about a G131 Grillo walk-behind tractor. This is the largest model in the Grillo line. Uh, has uh, a heavier duty transmission than anything else in the Grillo line and heavier duty clutch. Uh, also a 16 horsepower engine, twin cylinder Vanguard engine. Um, sometimes an 18 horse, but at, at present they have a 16 horse. Um, so we're gonna go through the tractor setup and features here. So if you were to get this thing, it would come in a box, cardboard box, Envision cardboard box. You get the box on a pallet. To get it out of the box, you become the Hulk and lift it out. No, don't do that because gamma radiation is bad for you. So just take your knife and slit the corners of the box, fold down one edge of the box, roll it out. These handlebars fold right up. There's the handlebar height adjustment control right in the middle here. It's this lever that sticks off the back. Push that down, bring the handlebars up to the desired position and the lever will lock in. It locks in once, there's like four positions for it, but once you bring those up, you can then roll the tractor around. I've got a little pallet under it just to keep it up off the ground here, but <clears throat> the tractor will roll around when in neutral. So now that you've got it out of the box, because the box is over there now, um, the, uh, the, the tractor obviously has the handlebars oriented in the front PTO position right now, this being the PTO of the tractor. So this is the position you would run the handlebars in if you were running a mower, snowblower, chipper shredder, or some other front mounted implement. Um, the more popular use for the G131 tractor is soil working applications. So I'm gonna turn the handlebars around and mount the gear shift levers with the handlebars in the soil working mode first or the rear PTO mode. So I'm gonna hit my handlebar control release here. This releases the handles so we can turn them. There's actually an offset position to each side of center, but we're gonna go all the way around. So. Now on the 131, the, this is the only model of tractor we sell that does not have a limiter stop that, that only allows you to move the handles in one direction. You can actually rotate the handles either way on this thing. And it's up to the intelligence of the operator to make sure you're not winding these cables up in a knot. So if you always rotate it the same direction, you're gonna have some cable issues. You just have to keep an eye on that. And make sure that uh, you know if you want if you turn it this way going you know to the front PTO mode you bring it back this way to go to the rear PTO mode so that things don't screw up. All right, so now we've got those around here. Um, I'm going to grab the gear shift rods. I've actually set them over here. Oh. These are the wrong ones, sorry. I've confused myself. So the G131 Grillo is the only walk-behind tractor we sell that actually uses two different sets of gear levers, depending on whether you're in front PTO or rear PTO mode. All the other tractors, the, the gear levers are reusable. This is actually the front PTO <clears throat> gear lever set here. Uh, and this, I got these piles mixed up when I was preparing here. This goes with this. What comes with the tractor standard equipment is gonna be the rear PTO gear lever set uh, because the tractor is primarily used, this model tractor is primarily used for rear PTO implements. So this is, this four lever set is what you're gonna get with the tractor when you order the tractor. This is available as a separate item. If you order a front PTO implement, then you know you need this gear lever set. So we're gonna put these things on. As you can see, there's different shapes and sizes here. Uh, the, we're gonna start with this one. This is the power takeoff shifter. It's got a gray knob on it. It goes to this one here, which goes right into the, near the power takeoff mount that shifts the PTO collar in and out. You can kind of see it moving behind the cardboard there. And that one is gonna go in this furthest out hole right here. Slide that down, put the little plastic joint on there. I like orienting the plastic joint so that the horizontal rod goes through on the opposite side of where your handlebars are oriented. For example, I would not put this on this side. I put it on this side. That's probably just weird on my, uh, it's just a habit I've always had, but it flattens out the angle just ever so slightly. Uh, when you're talking about these, some of these, some, sometimes the rods will get kind of a 
sharp angle going down, and the further you can get it that way, it, it kind of flattens the angle out some and helps you shift. So there is some uh, method to the madness. This one here is the differential lock control. It's a fully straight lever with a black grip uh, and actually has a metal joint on the end. The reason they use a metal joint on this one is because this rod, you're going to twist the rod to make it shift. You're not gonna push and pull it. So this has a lot more friction force on it. And if it were plastic, you would just kind of stretch it out too quickly. I do recommend greasing this when, when you've got steel against steel against steel, something's gonna wear or something's gonna rust. So I do recommend getting a little grease on this. Now I'm not gonna grease this one right now because this tractor is gonna go back in the, uh, in the box and you know, I don't want this thing to be covered with grease when somebody gets it, but it should be greased you know, before use. So you're gonna slip this through up here. And put the metal joint in place on the little shift rod there. It's got a groove in there to allow this to go through. And then slide that through there. Now, see how I've oriented this one going down and this one going up. Now, when you twist this around, it's gonna be oriented down too, but that's okay. That'll be the activated position. So that's locked, that's unlocked. All right, so next we've got these two orange handled shift levers. Like, why are they both orange? Why didn't they choose green or something? Well, they're both technically transmission sh uh, gear shift levers. The G131 is a unique tractor in that it, uh, well, in many ways, but it's unique in that it has essentially two gear shift levers. One is more the range selector. So it selects like a high range or a low range. And also on that range lever is reverse. So you've got a yellow position here on this decal. This corresponds with low range. And if you can read Italian, these probably stand for low, high. VEL, that's easy, it's velocity. So Villasotia or whatever it is, I don't do Italian. But that would be your high range, this would be your low range, it'd be slower, and then RM is your reverse mode. So you pull it all the way back into that position. Well, it's not gonna shift well when it's not running, but anyway, that, that backs the tractor up. So then on this shift lever here, there's a one and a three, and a two and a four. And you can see that there's different colors on those to correspond with the range positions. So if you're in the position it's in now, you're either in second gear if you're in low range, because this is all moved all the way up, or you're in fourth gear if you're in high range. Same, you move this back to one or three. Uh, now, if you're in the reverse mode with this, you've basically either got high reverse or low reverse, depending on the position of this sh selector. So you've got four gears forward and two reverse on this tractor. There's also a fifth gear available in this tractor, which you can't see on the selector. It is, it is hidden up here at the top of the selector. It's just blank. The, ab above the F, the F is neutral. Uh, there's just nothing. And right now, the selector won't go up that far because it's hitting this stop right here. That stop is there for safety purposes for sales within the European Union. In the US, this safety stop wouldn't have to be here, but it, it, they, just, they sell most of these machines in Europe, so they just leave the safety stop on them. If you don't like the safety stop here and you wanna access the fifth gear, which goes about 10 miles an hour, it's super fast, you just loosen up this bolt and rotate this knob forward to get it out of the way of this thing and retighten the bolt. And that's, that's that. And fifth gear is not affected by this range selector at all or the directional selector. It always goes forward and it always goes very fast. So, but it is not considered a working gear. It is only a transport gear for like riding a trailer or something like this. So we're gonna mount these two. Now we can figure out pretty easily how, where these go because this one has a black plastic joint to go on this one. This one already has the black plastic joint on it. So that eliminates the possibility of error. Hook this one up here. In through on the far side, put the washer on, and the 
clip. The washers are not terribly important. It's really the clip that does the holding. So if you lose the washer, don't bother calling us for a 50 cent washer. It's, uh, it doesn't do any holding. This one here, again, on the far side from the handlebars. All right, now we're ready to start shifting gears. These, these little brackets here also that are supporting the rods up top, those can be changed in their orientation. I've actually left them slightly loose so you can move them up or down. Once you select the position that seems to work well for them, you can go ahead and tighten them down. There's just a, a nut and a bolt on there. Uh, I'll go ahead and review some of the other controls. Um, we already talked about this one. This is your handlebar release control. Again, there's a offset position to either side so you can walk off to the side of your work. This is your throttle control that controls your engine speed. There's also a kill switch built into this on the newer Grillo machines. So when you bring it all the way up past the idle position, it will kill the engine. There's this wire is hooked into the ground system on the, on the engine or the a live wire on the coil. So basically pushing it down accelerates the engine, bring it up, brings the engine down and idle. We've already talked about this control in the middle. That was your height adjustment control for the handlebars. These controls are the steering brakes. You got independent steering brakes on the wheels and you know you pull them back and it, it will lock all the way back into an emergency brake position right there. Um, but you can also just pull it part way to get partial braking to, to make the machine steer. These are not in a terribly convenient location for mowing. It's part of the reason, I mean, it's one of the many reasons that the G131 is typically not used for a lot of mowing applications is because these brake levers being up here makes it kind of inconvenient to reach up here and, you know, pull those brake levers to get the thing to steer. For soil working applications, that, that style of brake can work pretty well because when you get to the end of the row, you can uh, clutch it to stop it. If you want to turn this way, pull the appropriate brake, and when you lift the tiller out of the ground and let out the clutch, it just turns around. The thing just turns. You're, the only effort you're putting out is holding the tiller up out of the ground. When you get lined up with where you want to go, you can just reach up and slap the brake off and poop, the thing starts going forward again. So that's, it's, it's, uh, it, takes, it keeps you from having to keep a hand on the brake while turning because you're busy lifting the tiller off the ground. When you're mowing, uh, you tend to mow with the implement on the ground so you'll just want, you want the brake control to be something like a squeeze grip so you can just hit it and it'll slide the mower to the side and you can keep mowing. So this is more conducive to the soil working genre that this machine is so good at. This is your clutch control on all the newer Grillo machines. This is what they call the active clutch, meaning you push down the clutch to engage power so it drives the machine. When I let this clutch up, the clutch opens and power is interrupted. The engine will still run, but there's no drive to the PTO or wheels. Everything's disengaged at the engine level. So you have to, in order to push that lever down, you have to touch that little safety release. That's a European Union safety thing as well. That actually wouldn't be necessary for the US market, but they're on there, so you just use it. Some people will put their hand down like that, but that's actually quite a bit harder because now I'm pushing uh, very close to the pivot point and I don't have much leverage. If you just drape your hand over the top and kind of touch that and then bring it down from here, I'm as far from the pivot point as I can get and increasing the leverage. Therefore, it comes down easily and then I can grip the handle. So that's that. Now we will do the exercise of turning the handles back around and uh, mounting the front PTO gear levers. So I'm going to get these gear levers off of here. Now you'll notice with the front PTO gear levers, there's only three. There are only three. Um, the differential lock cannot be hooked up. There's no way for the differential lock lever to come in from this angle because the battery box in the way. And we have a light plane going over. Go away, light plane. Yeah, so if you need the differential lock when you're mowing, 
you actually just have to walk down here and do it manually like that. It turns around with, without much effort. But there's, you know, usually you're not gonna need the differential lock while mowing because you don't need super traction like you would need for soil working applications. So, let's, oh, one more thing. So this gets a little more complicated because not only are we gonna change the shift levers, we have to change the gear shift selector lever. And this is for safety reasons because the, uh, the gears in this thing for particularly like high range fourth gear. So if you're in fourth, you know, we got it, got the gear lever in this position here, you're in high velocity and you're moving this way. I mean, fourth gear is about four and a half miles an hour. So it moves at a pretty good clip. When you turn the handlebars around on this thing for front PTO applications, that's reverse. This is forward and you really don't want to back up at four and a half miles an hour. It will bash your shins pretty good. So they've got a safety built into this. This little extra bracket that's attached to this lever uh, is going to serve as a safety block out to keep you from engaging those previously forward gears. That is what used to be forward, what is now reverse. Uh, it keeps you from going into those fast gears. Uh, there is also a slightly longer bolt that comes with this lever, which has to be used. I'm going to set this plastic joint to the side. This just pulls up out of there. You can see the bolt I've removed right here. The short bolt will stay with this bracket. You can just set that aside. The slightly longer bolt goes with the new bracket, drops into place like so, right there. And this longer bolt goes in here. Now, one thing I didn't mention, but I might as well do it now because it's a good time, is that with this, this lever here, which is your high range, low range reverse lever, there is this kind of extra thing on the outside. And people say, well, what the heck is that for? Well, that's part of the safety system for this thing. When I had the shift lever hooked up from this direction, which I'll actually just hook up a random shift lever to it just to, well, I'll use the correct one here. When I lock this through here, let's just pretend this is supported up here, it holds this plastic joint down at a certain level. It doesn't let it float up and down, and this, this whole sleeve is kind of locked in place. When I move this thing back into the reverse position, which is difficult to do since the tractor is not moving and the gears aren't turning, but if I pop it back into reverse, You'll notice this little ball right here interferes with the PTO engagement, which is part of this lever. So essentially, it doesn't let you put the PTO in gear when you're in reverse. Because if you could do that when you've got a tiller on it or a spader or a you know, rotary plow or something, you could plow your feet up. And most people like their feet pretty well, so you don't want to do that. So that's a safety that keeps your feet safe for uh, soil working applications. Now that we're going to turn these handlebars around, you were going to find that with the shift lever coming in from this other direction, it won't even hook up because this thing is in the way. That's because they make you turn this thing around like this, which you can do when there's no shift lever in it. It lets you ride that thing up and bring it around. Now this little knob is on the other side where it interfaces with this bracket. You can probably get a little better shot at the other side. Yeah, so that's that knob is gonna keep, that's what's gonna keep you from going in those faster gears that were previously forward gears, but are now reverse gears. So that's keeping you from breaking your legs. Again, you know, they care about your lower extremities. So I'm not gonna bother tightening that bolt down because I'm gonna be taking that out, but normally you would put a wrench on that and torque that down all the way. So, I'll set these back on here. I'm going to go ahead and turn these handles around. Make sure everything flows around there. These don't come with the, all the little joints because they figure you've already got them from your other set of shift levers. So, you're gonna put these shift rods in. The correlation on the colors uh, here is not precise. They've given you a black one, which the black was the differential lock, but obviously we're not gonna use the differential lock. That's gonna be another gear shift one. So 
don't pay any attention to the colors. <laughs> well, you have to pay some attention. Okay, so we're gonna drop this in. Let me think about this. They don't, they don't give us any good markings on these. So I think this one is gonna be the bottom one. That's gonna go here. So we're gonna put that through to here. Ah, no, I got it in the wrong position. I should have looked at the way they were bent because you want the outside one facing down so it doesn't interfere with the inside one. So that would be correct. And then this one is gonna face up so that's your inside one so that you're not bumping, they're not bumping into each other here on the back end. Get in there. I'm not gonna bother putting the pins on, you can see how it goes. And of course, the gray one is color-coded correctly. And it doesn't matter where you put that because you got two open holes over here now. Bring it through here and you're hooked up. As I say, the differential lock just has to be done manually down here. So now you're ready for your mowing applications or uh, snow blowing or uh, you know chipper shredding or whatever it is gonna be. Another thing I wanna talk about is this little control right here. It looks a little like the differential lock, except it has a black rubber grip shoved over it. And this is something that none of the other walk behind tractor models have. This is a axle release lever. And what it does, it flips around just like the differential lock. And in this position here, facing back away from the engine, it actually disengages the axle completely from the rest of the gears in the transmission. And the result being that the thing will push as easily as a wheelbarrow. I mean, there's just no resistance at all because you're not turning any of the internal gears of the transmission. If you put the gear selector in neutral, but still have this locked in, it pushes, you saw me roll it earlier, uh, but it pushes with more effort because you're actually turning some of the transmission gears. Uh, so this is a convenient thing if you just need to roll the tractor around in your barn for servicing or whatever and you don't want to start it up, makes it real easy to roll. Also, the G131 is one of the, uh, the only, the two, it's one of two tractor models we carry that has a synchronized PTO unit available for it. That's a, a second PTO shaft that mounts right out of here. Um, it's kind of a dealer installed option that allows you to have a ground synchronized PTO for running a driven wheel trailer. The driven wheel trailer uh, will then, you know, you have PTO power driving the wheels of the trailer, so you essentially have a four wheel drive utility vehicle. These things are very awesome. Um, and because you have this axle unlock feature, you have the advantage of being able to disengage your front wheels and just drive it on the rear wheels, which is handy if you wanna take it down a paved road or something like that, um, because there's no center differential on this machine like between the tractor and implement. Uh, so if you're running that driven, driven wheel trailer on a hard surface road, it's recommended to disengage this and just run it on the rear wheels. So that's what that's for. Um, I will pull these back out, just to get them out of the way. And then we'll start talking about oil and maintenance and things like that. Whoops, I kind of did this from the wrong direction. There we go. So on the Briggs engine, the oil fill is here on the valve cover. Oil check is here with a dipstick. This is one of the few engines we deal with that still has a dipstick. Most engines we deal with have a real low oil fill port on them uh, and you just ch check it and fill it at the same port. But this one, no, it's got a real dipstick like a car. This is a twin cylinder engine with an oil pump on it. You know, just make sure it's filled to the top of the safe zone with the engine level. Right now the engine's not level. That would be more like level. So you'd wanna check, you know, level that up before you check it. Uh, again, oil goes in here on the valve cover. Gas here, of course. I'm gonna turn these handles back around to get them out of the way. And uh, the air cleaner is under here. We have an air filter maintenance video on our website. I encourage you to read that or read that, watch that, just to get up to speed on how to maintain a two-stage air filter properly. 
these things come from us completely serviced, so there's going to be oil in the engine, there's going to be oil in the transmission. Um, there will not be fuel in it, you'll have to add fuel. Um, there is a transmission oil dipstick right here in the middle. That's where you fill and check. Dipstick's right on the bottom, it is filled properly because we've gone through this thing. Check that once a year. Um, it is recommended to change the engine oil after about 10 hours of use for your initial break-in. After that, change it every 50 hours. Uh, this does not have an oil filter. It is a pressure lubrication engine, but there is no oil filter. We had to, they had to basically uh, either, it was either the oil filter or the muffler. There's not room for both in this particular application. So most people want a muffler, so no oil filter on this one. Um, the transmission oil drain is right here. We have a video on, tra on changing transmission oil and the correct type to use. It is recommended to change that after the first year of service, and after that, it should be good for five years or so. Uh, now, of course, this is electrical start, so it has a battery. The key is located here. Actually, two keys taped together, so it's uh, recommended to cut the tape and separate them so you don't lose them both at once. You've also got a recoil start override in case your battery goes dead. I'm gonna go ahead and fire this thing up. I don't have any shift levers attached to it, but I'll just reach down and shift it manually. So I'll advance the throttle a little bit. That's, yeah, the clutch is always open, so I don't have to worry about that. Choke control is here. I'll pull that out to choke it. And there's a fuel shutoff control around on this side, right next to the fuel pump. That's the fuel pump. This is the fuel shutoff. When it's cross, to the fuel line itself, it's off. When it's in line with the fuel line, it's on. So, crank it up. still unlocked. I just realized that I forgot to change that gear shift lever back. That's still the front PTO one. I was wondering why it wouldn't let me shift gears there. So it's a good lesson to you. If you switch back and forth between the front and rear PTO gear levers, you gotta put the original gear lever back on, the little short lever here. Otherwise, you're not gonna have your full range of forward gears because two of them are blocked out. So we'll do that later. You know what to do. Thanks for watching.